We start with a point. Hi, everybody, and welcome back. Here we are again at the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. And today's entry is going to be talking about the image we're seeing behind us here, which comes from the Fifth Dimensional Camera Project. And I'd like to start out with a quote from Albert Einstein. Time and space are modes by which we think and not conditions in which we live. Now, if you listen to the Theatre of the Mind interview uh, that we just looked at, you'll notice that I brought up the fifth dimension quite a number of times. So today, let's look at a very good reason for doing so. The picture we're looking at here comes from a project created by John Ardern and Anab Jain as Superflux in collaboration with scientists at Oxford University. And I'll put up the link here for you to be able to go see the blog entry where they talk about this project. I noticed David Deutsch's name on the list of distinguished persons consulted for this presentation, and regular readers of this blog will know that I mention Dr. Deutsch's important work regularly. But it's always been my disappointment that in conversation with him three years ago, he was not willing to embrace my fifth dimensional approach to understanding Everett's many worlds and the spooky world of quantum mechanics. Uh, here's some info I received back from John and Anab, and I'll quote from their letter. Hi, Rob. We found your Imagining the Tenth Dimension project very inspirational in the research and design of the fifth dimensional camera. The designers of this project were myself, John Arden, and Anab Jain as Superflux. We worked mainly with Dr. Andrew Briggs, Dr. John Rarity, Dr. Simon Benjamin from QIP IRC, the Quantum Information Processing Interdisciplinary Research Collaboration based at Oxford University. They were our main point of contact for understanding the science and the people we went to when we needed clarity on a concept or idea. And uh, I'll put up a link to their website. The project was also backed by the EPSRC and the Royal College of Art in London. In our conversation with Dr. David Deutsch, we did not directly talk about fifth dimension as probability space. The conversation ended up being more about interpretations and misinterpretations of scientific investigation. We did, however, show the first part of your introductory video to the scientists we were working with. This was in relation to our initial concepts for the project, but there was no objection in any way to your description of the fifth dimension. All the best, John and Anab. Now I want to put up another illustration here from their Superflux blog. It shows a visualization of the branching timelines representing the parallel universes resulting from chance and choice, which are at the core of Everett's Many Worlds interpretation, and which I've been insisting make much more sense when we see that these branches occur in the fifth rather than the fourth dimension. As I mentioned recently in a blog entry called The Forest, I hear regularly from teachers thanking me for the thought-provoking discussions they've had in the classroom after showing students my original animation. I remarked on a regular basis since the 2006 launch of my project that my new way of thinking about time and space seems to be moving closer to the new theories being advanced by mainstream physicists about the underlying structures of our reality. And I do hear regularly from people with a physics background who like my ideas. But having respected professors from the University of Oxford now willing to examine my concept that quantum superposition and Everett's many worlds can be much more easily understood if we accept that these events take place in the fifth dimension is definitely a major step forward for my project. So I'm grateful to John and Anab for undertaking to create this demonstration and for their work in helping to get my ideas out into the world. Now I'd like to finish off by showing you an entertaining video that they made to help promote what this fanciful fifth dimensional camera might be like if it is actually built someday. That's all for this time around. Next time, the subject is going to be entangled neurons. In the heart of this device, held at a temperature just a few degrees above absolute zero, we place our prototype quantum computer. It would be a machine that could solve really hard computational problems beyond what any conventional machine could hope to achieve. And if we can crack those problems, it would have huge consequences, ranging through healthcare to security and into the development of new drugs and materials. So how does it work? Well, the science behind it is complicated, but in essence, it relies on the fact that within the quantum computer, we can do many, many calculations at the same time. 
This relies on a deep principle of quantum mechanics called superposition. Quantum superposition is the ability for certain very small objects to be in two or more states at the same time. Imagine a coin, but not a conventional coin, a minute coin at the nanometer scale. If I could somehow toss it, then it wouldn't need to be in simply heads or tails at the end. It could be simultaneously showing us heads and tails. It would have entered a state of quantum superposition. As an object becomes bigger, it's more difficult to maintain this superposition. And of course, we never see ourselves at the human scale in more than one state at the same time. But the principles of quantum mechanics suggest that these possibilities give rise to other worlds in which the different scenarios continue to play out, even though we can never perceive them. Science can be thought of as an instrument for seeing what cannot be seen. We were able to deduce the existence of atoms long before we eventually had the technology to see them. And in the same way, the theory of quantum mechanics allows us to deduce the possibility of many worlds, even though we cannot actually see these other realities. And that's what this exhibit is about. We've designed the fifth dimensional camera, a fictional device that allows us to think about what it would be like to live in a world where some of these possibilities move from the laboratory and start to influence our everyday lives. In this way, the fifth dimensional camera is both a metaphor for scientific investigation in the field of quantum computation and also an exploration of the impact this field may have on our daily lives.